Caliban and the Witch, Section, The Witch Hunt and the New World. The counterparts of the typical European witch, then, were not the Renaissance magicians, but the colonized Native Americans and the enslaved Africans, who, in the plantations of the, quote, New World, shared a destiny similar to that of women in Europe, providing for capital the seemingly limitless supply of labor necessary for accumulation. So connected were the destinies of women in Europe and those of the Amerindian and Africans in the colonies that their influences were reciprocal. Witch hunting and charges of devil worshipping were brought to the Americas to break the resistance of the local populations, justifying colonization and the slave trade in the eyes of the world. In turn, according to Luciano Parinetto, it was the American experience that persuaded the European authorities to believe in the existence of entire populations of witches and instigated them to apply in Europe the same techniques of mass extermination developed in America. In Mexico, quote, from 1536 to 43, the Bishop Zumaraga conducted 19 trials involving 75 Indian heretics, mainly drawn from the political and religious leaders of central Mexican communities, a number of whom ended their lives at the stake. The Friar Diego de Landa led idolatry trials in the Yucatan, during the 1560s, in which torture, whippings, and auto de fe figured prominently. End quote. Witch hunts were conducted also in Peru to destroy the cult of the local gods, considered demons by the Europeans. Quote, Everywhere the Spaniards saw the face of the devil, in the foods, in the primitive vices of the Indians, in their barbaric languages. End quote. In the colonies, too, it was women who were more vulnerable to being accused of being witches, for being held in special contempt by the Europeans as weak-minded females. They soon became the staunchest defenders of their communities. The common fate of Europe's witches and Europe's colonial subjects is further demonstrated by the growing exchange, in the course of the 17th century, between the ideology of witchcraft and the racist ideology that developed on the soil of the conquest and the slave trade. The devil was portrayed as a black man, and black people were increasingly treated like devils, so that, quote, devil worship and diabolical interventions became the most widely reported aspect of the non-European societies the slave traders encountered, end quote. From Laps to Samoyed to the Hottentots and Indonesians, there was no society, Anthony Barker writes, which was not labeled by some Englishmen as actively under diabolical influence, end quote. Just as in Europe, the trademark of diabolism was an abnormal lust and sexual potency. Footnote. With reference to the West Indies, Anthony Barker writes that no aspect of the unfavorable image of the Negro built by the slave owners had wider or deeper roots than the allegation of insatiable sexual appetite. Missionaries reported that the Negroes refused to be monogamous, were excessively libidinous, and told stories of Negroes having intercourse with apes. The fondness of Africans for music was also held against them, as proof of their instinctual, irrational nature. End footnote. The devil was often portrayed as possessing two penises, while tales of brutish sexual practices and inordinate fondness for music and dancing became staples in the reports of missionaries and travelers to the, quote, New World. Picture. 16th century representation of Caribbean Indians as devils, from Tobias George Smollett, Compiler, a compendium of authentic and entertaining voyages digested in a chronological series, 1766. End caption. According to the historian Brian Eastlia, this systematic exaggeration of black sexual potency betrays the anxiety that white men of property felt towards their own sexuality. Presumably, white upper-class males feared the competition of the people they enslaved whom they saw as closer to nature because they felt sexually inadequate due to excessive doses of self-control and prudential reasoning. But the over-sexualization of women and black men, the witches and the devils, must also be rooted in the position which they occupied in the international division of labor that was emerging on the basis of the colonization of America, the slave trade, and the witch hunt. For the definition of blackness and femaleness as marks of bestiality, and irrationality, conformed with the exclusion of women in Europe and women and men in the colonies from the social contract implicit in the wage, 
and the consequent naturalization of their exploitation. End of section.